Hey guys, welcome back to IT Garage. And today, the car is, that's what's missing. You know, it's, it's actually at the exhaust shop right now. This video turned into a little bit of what I have dubbed as automotive ADHD. It's all over the place. Do we get anything done? Mad dash to get it ready for the cruising season without thinking about filming a video while doing it. So this is the product of that. Stay tuned to the end and uh, you know, catch some new wheels, headlights working, brake lights, uh, safety upgrade. We got some redneck body work going on, all sorts of different things. So stay tuned and we'll see you guys at the end. Hey guys, today we're working back on the Edsel. We're gonna bypass the neutral safety switch. It's not starting because of that. The way I put in the shifter and all that stuff, it's not quite right. So I think the neutral safety switch is causing issues. And also, like most things on these old cars that you use, once you start using them after sitting for, I don't know, 40 years, 43 years, they then break. Um, so I think the neutral safety switch has gone bad. So what we're going to do is we're just going to jumper wire it down here and see if we can get this car to start. And also, this is an issue because my cheater switch, is that what you call this, cheater switch, um, has died because you can see the rust coming out of it because I left it outside. Uh, maybe I could take it apart and clean it up. Maybe I won't, I don't know. Uh, but down here is the neutral safety switch. You see those red wires right there, right behind that brake line? That is what we're after. So if I understand correctly, if I pop that off and short those out, we should be good to go. And if it doesn't work, then I guess we'll figure it out from there. Shout out to the Etzel pages on Facebook that have the wiring diagrams posted. So I can just go check them out. Get some alligator clip shoved in there. See what happens. In the cleanest install ever, we've got the alligator clip shoved in there. I think I got keys in my pocket. Let's go back over here. Yeah, shout out to uh, Etzel Garage people or Etzel Reservation or Etzel Preservation, whatever that group is called. Um, I can never remember the order of the name. Is it restoration and preservation or preservation and restoration? So this is our wire from the other side, I believe. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on the starter solenoid. Our battery should be fully charged because I ran it on the charger. Let's get back in the car, twist one of these many keys and see what happens. Hopefully it starts. Alrighty, upside down because Ford. Oh, I accidentally went too fast for you guys. Did you hear that though? So we're in park, right? Where it should be. A couple pumps of the gas just like that it's gonna take a second but there she goes fixed uh let's go ahead and get something a little bit more permanently routed for that and go ahead and just forget about it totally uh pretend that it's totally perfect nothing's nothing's wrong down there uh and if we really want to put it back in we'll put it back in um but like i said because of my shifter configuration and the c6 transmission it's going to be hard um, which isn't a reason not to do something. You shouldn't do something because you shouldn't not attempt to do something because it's hard. It's a double negative still. Uh, you know what I mean? But we need to get this thing cruising, right? Uh, what's fried burgers say? Don't get it right. Get it running. Well, now it runs again. See, just like this. It runs, but it wasn't doing that before. And now it is. So we fixed it. I don't know what the solution is going to be. Uh, obviously, those alligator clips are just a little bit too much. Um, and I don't want to ruin the original wiring just in case we decide to go back correctly. Hey, look at this. Here's a nice little jumper wire. What if we just uh, shove this in there and tape it up and call it a day? Alrighty, and just like that, we got it fixed. You know, a little bit of red cheap electrical tape around a wire that we bent down in there, shoved them in there. Is it watertight? No. Will it last forever? No. But if the car stops suddenly working, I know what the problem is. You know, and by working, I mean starting. Um, you know, because that's the problem. It was starting at the key, and then all of a sudden it quit on me. Couldn't figure out why, and it dawned on me that I remember the neutral safety switch in this car actually worked, which was kind of surprising based on the state of everything else when I found it. Now she starts right at the touch of a key again. This motor really is a runner. I mean, just like that. I'm impressed with it. Uh, needs an exhaust really bad because uh, right now it just sounds not good with the open headers But what we're gonna do next is The wheel this front wheel down here. It just feels like it's gonna fall off the car. Could it be the tire? That's bad. Maybe 
So what we're gonna do is change two variables at the same time, which you're not supposed to do. But we are going to swap the wheels. So if it feels like it switches from driver side to passenger side, we know it's the actual tire that is causing the issue. And if it stays on the driver's side, we know it's still the driver's side that's the problem, it's not the tires. The next thing we're gonna do, so we're gonna go in there and make sure that that hub is totally tight. Everything's good to go there. Uh, my uncle's here in town. He's done a little bit more of this maintenance stuff than me. Uh, I've read more books about it than I have. So we're gonna go make sure everything's touched up with that and kind of go from there. And after that, we need to look at getting the hood to close because it still doesn't close. And I still think it's this cable. I think this cable is just hanging up. It's not really doing the, the, the release thing. So when you push the hood down, it doesn't have enough time to go back. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of WD-40 in here. See if we can get this to loosen up for now. Then we'll kind of go from there. All right, so my immediate answer is no. I did not do anything. Um, you know, it is what it is. Maybe I'll have to find a new cable. It doesn't look like it's run in that crazy of a place or anything like that. Um, maybe the Fairlane ones fit. Maybe there's a universal one that I can just grab that uh, that is good to go because it just it just doesn't do the back thing, right? It comes out and then it stays out, which I'm guessing is not good for closing the hood. So we're gonna have to go ahead and get a new one. Um, maybe my uncle has an idea. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I tried to turn a little bit of lube at it and didn't really seem to do anything. On to the raising the car and getting the wheels swapped out. All right, so you got the car jacked up. Got one glove on because, you know, don't need to waste two. And uh, here we go, we got our nut. I pulled the dust cover off and I got the cotter pin. You know the thing I just put in there? Got the cotter pin out and this thing is quite literally finger tight. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tighten it down, back it off according to spec or whatever that is. Hopefully the wobble goes away. And I still wanna switch the wheels just to see if that's all sweat too. I don't wanna have to redo something if it's just the, the tire throwing it off. Cause these tires are shot to say the least they're, they're pretty rough so new wheels and tires coming soon hopefully probably once the buick sells we'll get new tires on this and, and some new wheels probably some smoothies of some sort probably they're black or white not sure we'll see what's on sale around us uh i wouldn't be i wouldn't hate the chrome ones the all chrome smoothies too there's a set around christmas i tried buying but they sold before i could get them ranting let's go ahead and get this thing tightened up and see what happens we went ahead and really tightened that down backed it off still spins just like you'd expect so no issues there at all. And I did not switch the wheels from side to side because I forgot. Um, but we got straightened back up now. My uncle's heading to the store to grab some stuff. And uh, it is now raining pretty good outside. And it's gonna rain until about 1 p.m. tomorrow. We're kind of stuck in the water here on this one, uh, which sucks. We really don't have too much else we can do, to be honest, until we see if that fixes it or not. I guess we could take it on the block in the rain. Maybe we will maybe we won't i'd hate to get stuck and then be in the rain stuck in the rain <laughs> i hate the rain i don't know we'll, we'll see what we end up doing you guys will know here sooner than i do probably all right well it is not done raining but it has slowed down raining and we got the buick moved tucked over there first time i've double sided on the, the cars on the side over here um we'll see if that's enough room to get in and out uh, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the etzel out it's on some flats you know they're not totally filled up you know obviously driving isn't going to be like awesome but we're gonna get the windshield cleaned up and get out of here go around the block see what happens all right we got the windshield clean well, compared to that side she's perfect what's the worst that can happen right break down and sweat outside thankfully my uncle's here we can get pulled home with his tow ropes i guess all right upside down forward key let's go I actually caught my uncle out and we uh i had him follow me and he said something's definitely up with this front driver's side so we'll take it off we'll make sure it got mounted all the way right so that sort of stuff swap to the passenger side and i guess we'll see if it moves i don't know hey guys how's it going I don't know where we are in this meteor video right now while I'm making the content, but I do know that I scored some wheels. Um, these are 14 by sevens. They're wide wheels for the time. Factory Ford wheels. I don't know what they come off of. We got them sanded down a little bit. We got them primed up a little bit and I bought a turbo can to try out. So we're gonna paint these things gloss black with this turbo can. Let's see how it does. Have you guys used a turbo can before? Let me know. Is it too cold to be spray painting? Yeah, probably. Is it too late? 
Eh, probably. So we'll see how this turns out. Anything's better than what it was, which is the whole point. All right, so everyone's seen Casey Customs do this like a thousand times, but this is a first for me. It just painted like that whole wheel in one spray. Holy cow. This stuff is crazy. <laughs> there you go. Four sprays and the wheel's painted. All right, I'll get you guys set up on a tripod and uh, get the rest of these three painted up, or maybe I'll just do it by hand. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Make sure you get that piece of dust or grass, whatever that is, out of there. We only strive for perfection here. <laughs> this paint is insane. <laughs> this stuff's pretty cool. We'll let that dry for about 12 seconds, and we'll go ahead and give another coat. It's just the backs. I'm not too concerned. I'll get in the light. Uh, once we move to the front, uh, I'll go ahead and flip them, uh, get them painted, do as nice as I can, obviously. Um, and then when they're dry, we're going to move them in here underneath the carport where it's a little bit warmer, less bugs, less wind, tr stuff from the trees won't fall on it. Try to let those dry nice. Hopefully we got a good, so good looking set of wheels. I do have tires already. They're up front. Uh, they did not come in the white wall like I was hoping. And I'm not talking about big, wide white. I'm talking about the white wall like we had in the courier, you know, right about here. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I did want to run a set of portal walls on the Etzel. So maybe this just become the Etzel wheels because I bought two sets. We're not powder coating wheels here. We're just spray painting. So if we want to change the wheels to white for the Etzel, it's just a coat of spray paint. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I don't know what exactly we're going to do, uh, but we're just going to do so that we can get enjoying these cars because the Buick's about sold by now. We're about to only have the Lincoln as a fun car, so we need to get the Edsel back on the road. We need to get the Meteor going again. I uh, get that thing moving forward, so who knows what's up, but we're going to get moving on these things, and, you know, just random wheels is part of that, I guess, for now. All right, guys, here we are back in the basement. Uh, we got the wheels done, mostly done. I definitely put way too much paint on them. They'll probably take three days to dry, but that's all right. We're not in a huge rush. Saturday night, the tire shop is probably open tomorrow, but we'll probably just wait till Monday to get them mounted. They're looking pretty good. You know, they look really good on camera as I pass real quick. But if you look, you know, there's spots right there where the paint just didn't want to stick for some reason. So I put paint on them probably way too much. Uh, the drips confirm that. So we're gonna let this dry. We'll go ahead and do a light sand where the paint doesn't seem to stick right. Go ahead through and go through with a black again. Just touch up those spots. Uh, every wheel's got one or two. You know, they're not perfect in the slightest. Once we get the wheels sanded down a little bit, throw a little more black paint on there. Throw a little more gloss on top. I'm sure they'll be good enough. We're going to throw the heater on just like 55, 60 degrees, um, which isn't too much warmer than outside, but just enough to try to help speed up the process a little bit here well we got our belongings out of the buick and it's gone uh she's she's gone so we got uh we got the money we needed out of it and uh it's off to a place that they're gonna you know touch up the interior and you know i'm, I'm gonna do it right. i'm gonna do it right so hopefully they do uh it'd be super cool to see and i see he's gonna send updates so i'll update you if i get updates i guess we'll see how this goes now it is time to fully go full full send as the kids say on this meteor. I'm gonna go down and give you guys a sneak peek right now. So right here, we got some tires. We got two 15, 70, 14s. They're gonna go on these 14 by sevens. So some nice wide steel wheels from Ford back in the day. What we got back here with the dogs are a set of freshly painted. Not so fresh, that's a big deal. They're, they're curing, so we'll get that off there. You guys might have already seen this by now in the video. I don't know, but they are done. They are not perfect, but they look good enough for what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and get these tires mounted up probably tomorrow just to make sure they're totally cured. You know, I don't want to mess with none of that. So we're going to make sure they're 100% good to go. So we're going to go ahead and play with some wheels and tires on some cars here. I'm not sure how I'm going to make this video because we're just going to be a com combination of both the cars, but it is what it is. So... Let's see what we end up doing here. What do you think, Finn? You gonna miss the Buick, bud? Yeah, you think so? All right. Hey guys, we're back at it today. We're gonna be working on the Edsel. Like I said, when my uncle was in town, uh, we went and drove it around the block. I had him follow me and he saw that there was some movement in the wheels. Thankfully, a lot of these Fords around here have the same bolt pattern, including the Meteor down there. The Meteor, does it have good tires? No, 
No, it doesn't. But it has five by four and a half wheels with tires that hold air. So we're gonna go ahead and rob those off that car, put them on this car. They'll probably look a little bit goofy. Um, maybe not, maybe they'll look good. I don't know. And then we're gonna go drive it around and see if that little death wobble situation is resolved. Um, if it is resolved, then cool. It's these wheels and tires. They're junk. Um, I know they're junk. Are the junk wheels and tires causing the problem or is the problem just worse because junk? I don't know. You know, we're trying to figure it out. We don't know what we're doing. We're just guessing. Let's go ahead and get these uh, last few lug nuts off. We'll do that about four more times. All right, I went ahead and just installed the rears on this car because how many times do you have to see somebody install and uninstall and sweat and tuck your shirt back in so your butt crack don't hang out? You know, how many times do you want to see that? So <laughs> we got the rears done. The Mustang wheels are off. The 14s are on. Look how far in that wheel is. There was something about the rear ends on these cars and they were supposed to use Mercury ones and they used Ford ones and that's why their wheels are so sucked in. I don't know. Realistically, no matter what we run on this car, there's probably gonna be some sort of space around the back just to pull the wheel to the front of the wheel well because there's about a mile between <laughs> the front and the side here. I mean, that's more than a hand width. You know, we'd like to get that, I don't know, to here probably, um, at least. Who knows exactly what's gonna happen with this. Uh, you know, we're just using what we got. Like I said, I do have another set of 14 by sevens. So those would help over these, I don't know, what are these five and a half probably? Is that enough? I don't know. We're gonna have to find some like 225s and space them. Uh, we'll see. Uh, let me know, you, have you guys run wheels on these goofy Edsels that look good. See what we can come up with, I guess. All right, I've been sweating. Hopefully my neck isn't too red. We got the uh, we got the Edsel wheels switched on. Well, we got the Mercury wheels put on the Edsel. We got uh, the oven preheating and some water on the stove. So we don't have too long to be messing around out here. Um, we gotta get this Lincoln moved so we can get the Edsel out. So take a look at that. So here it is, it's the uh, original style forward wheels on you know take those mustang wheels off that everyone so loved <laughs> in the uh in the first video i did of this car uh, i didn't think they're gonna be so incredibly polarizing but and they're not my favorite don't get me wrong but guys cheap rollers are cheap rollers you gotta buy brand new wheels and tires but to have a car sit for another two years that'd be dumb anyways i'm not afraid to admit that i think the reason with the our wheels falling off is that there wasn't enough threads on the original studs to keep the spacers tight on the hub because i know for sure that i went in and tightened them down and it always seemed to get worse after driving like when i first pulled the car out it didn't do this at all and then it slowly got worse and worse and worse and worse i think every single one of the lug nuts were backing off on the spacers because there wasn't enough threads to hold on to. That's just my thought. You know, looking back, maybe I should have known. I don't know. Uh, we're learning here, guys. Do you guys know everything? I didn't think so. I don't know if you can hear me at all, but it seems like it's gone. Nice even steering wheel, no major complaints. Stout straight, not too bad. So I don't know if it was a mix of the wheels and the uh, spacers and rotors, but it seems to be squared up. I'm gonna finish this lap around the block and we'll meet you back at the house. Man, I am freaking pumped. That could not have gone any better. Uh, I know we did like, I'll map it out in Google Maps a mile maybe, but it felt so much better. It felt so much better on these skinnier tires, way easier to turn. So I think we're gonna leave some skinnies up front on this car no matter what we do. And it just, it drove smooth. Like it drove really smooth. No clunks in the suspension, no nothing. This thing drove good for what it is. It needs a little bit of brake tune up still, don't get me wrong, you know, but it stops, it stops, it steers. It does everything that it's supposed to do. I think I might go ahead and throw these uh, Ford Motor Company van hubcaps on there just to uh, 
see if that gets any reactions in the comments, you know? Comments, good or bad, creates engagement, which is what YouTube wants to see. So go ahead, leave a comment. Just cuss me out. <laughs> Do something. Hey guys, just got back from the tire shop and I love how these wheels turned out. I'd show you, but it's kind of anticlimactic because they're all in backwards. But let me get these pulled out here and show you what they look like. They look, they look good. Not too bad. Pretty good looking tire right there. Wheel and tire. I do wish it was a white wall like that one, but you know, they were cheap enough. We got them. Black walls don't look bad on these cars, you know, especially when you got a, a wide tire like this and gonna run some spider cap or dog dish. It's gonna look good. I'm not gonna not have it look good. Um, so I'm gonna get the rest of these unloaded. Not my favorite thing that the wheel weights are on the front. They're on the front and the back, you know, is what it is. Uh, so I'll probably go ahead and brush some black paint on those, try to get those hidden just a little bit more. It's kind of language barrier <laughs> at the tire shop that I go to. Great guy. I love him. He's my favorite. I recommend all my buddies to go to him. But, you know, there's a little bit of a, a language barrier there. So, no big deal. I'll make sure the next ones get uh, put on the backside. Worry about it later. Hey, guys. Back at it today. We're going to get these rear wheels changed out. Just the rears for now. Uh, I kind of want to see something out with the bike over there. There's just not a ton of room and the air compressor. So, we'll change the back wheels. See how it looks with the skinny fronts, fat backs swapping around in the carport and when you get a picture of both these two cars with the fronts in the same orientation get a nice little photo of them for something upcoming you'll see that soon but here's the wheels we're putting on they are 215 70 14s and they are replacing 195 75 14 a little bit fatter about the same height i think they just they turned out great i love the the way the tires fit the wheel not too much bulge just a really nice solid looking wheel here um so let's go ahead and get these off i already got them broke loose with my uh icon ratchet that was on sale uh, it was only like six dollars or seven dollars or something like that nice little breaker bar not nothing crazy just a nice little three eighths inch breaker bar that comes with a lifetime warranty for seven dollars come on can't beat that been using it it's pretty nice we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this car jacked up and use the impact to get all these lug nuts off the rest of the way If you can tell a difference on the phone, but you can see a difference in person, that's for sure. How much thicker the tires in the back. Nice little uh, upgrade there. Just the more aggressive look, in my opinion. Feel free to disagree. Let's go ahead and throw this on there. Do the same to the other side. Should be looking good. We're going to have fitment issues. <laughs> I bet if I jacked up the body of the car and not the axle you wouldn't have any problem all my jack stands are downstairs holding up the meteor because well that's what's wearing the meteor's wheels right now all right let's see what happens now now we need to jack the car back up <laughs> to get it on there because the hub is lower than the wheel you knew what i meant Oh, that looks so much better. That extra dish there in the back just makes the difference. And it could still come out, you know, it's, it could still come out. So maybe we'll run like an inch spacer in there and really get this thing tucked all the way out and make it look really sweet. But man, that looks good. I love those wheels. I mean, compared to that, that's so much better. So let's go ahead and get this one swapped out. Then we'll uh, probably move this car over here somewhere, or maybe over there, 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 there. Who knows? But get this thing turned around. Get it up there. Get some get some daylight on it. Let's see how this thing looks for real in the sun, um, or windy gray skies. That's what I meant to say. Um, <laughs> but I I dig it. I really do. I think it looks sweet. I'm pumped, and I like the ideas of the skinnies in the front, fats in the back a whole lot. So let's go ahead and get these things swapped out. Not a not a crazy wide tire still, I get that, but the dish on that wheel, it just looks so much better. So let's go ahead and check this side out. This side looks good too. Nice. Um, 
just for laughs. I know I was talking about the spacers and how I think they're the problem on why it felt like the wheel was gonna fall off the car. So let's ignore that they're a problem and let's try to put them on this right now and see what happens. I measured, there's like two and seven eighths of an inch left on the distance between the tire and the side wall, fender, quarter panel, whatever it is. So let's go ahead and throw some two inch spacers on there and see how it looks. And realistically, I'll probably get some inch and a half spacers and probably run those just to make sure. Let's uh, let's throw some two inch spacers on, probably just the one side, just to, okay, just to see how it looks. I'm curious. Well, you can tell I'm excited about this because I forgot to start recording. Uh, you know, when you're trying to make YouTube videos on what you're doing, educate and boost confidence of others that they can do it too. You need to record it. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go ahead and throw this two inch spacer that I just told you guys was probably the reason why the wheels felt like they're gonna fall off the car. Um, and if I do decide to run spacers, I'm probably gonna have to punch out those studs and get longer studs to run any sorts of spacers because you know you can see they seat way down in there. So it's not like a, you know, if I get an inch, it's gonna be less or whatever. It's gonna, I'm gonna have the same problem unless I get longer studs. Oh. I'm about to find out if two inches is too much. Oh, I like that a lot more. Let's see what happens. Oh, that looks so good. Man, I don't think it'll rub at all either. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Dang it. Now I'm gonna have to get wheel studs and press those in because that looks so flipping good. Oh, I love it. And I think it'll help accentuate the wide versus skinny stance on the tires. You know, if these back ones are sticking out more and the front ones are, you know, where they're supposed to be. Maybe we'll throw, you know, tiny spacers on the front. Maybe we'll throw half inch or three quarter inch just to pull them out a little bit because these tires on these cars really are sucked in underneath the body. We made a funnel out of an old, well, not old, I guess, out of a Ziploc bag. A couple of rubber bands hold. <laughs> I love, yeah. With a couple of rubber bands holding it on. So hopefully that stays and when I spray this extremely affordable croil down there, hopefully it lubricates the, yeah, see? Which literally looks like it's just transmission fluid, which I had, and it does not cost $20 for this can. So we're, we're gonna, we're gonna let that you. soak for a while. And I'm actually gonna go inside the car and kind of help it a little bit at the same time and, and work it back and forth at the same time. So I'm gonna tuck this up here, try to get it as, what's what I'm looking for here, Jeanette? Secure? Well, I'm thinking like the condensed, like the fluid's all in one spot. Oh. So well, then maybe you should have just said condensed. That's what I was working on. It. Trying to make me look dumb on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's what this is all about. It's all ploy. <laughs> it's a long time. You gotta prove to your friends that I'm not cool. Right. What I've heard online is that because we have this higher up and it did just drip, so I don't know how well it's going to work. Theoretically, this fluid should end up inside the car. It should work its way down and get inside the car. But like I said, I'm impatient. Um, I'd like to get this hood to close today. Um, so we're going to go inside, help it a little bit. So watch out here. I'm going to go inside and pull the, I'm going to pull the hood release. We're gonna spray coil all down in here too, make sure this is totally lubed up. And uh, then I'll go ahead and shut the hood and see if it actually latches. Oh, welcome back. Are you ready to help? It's it's, it's oily. It I, I seriously think it's just transmission fluid. Great. What do you guys think? Internet. What is coil? Is it just transmission fluid? Okay, it's... wait. Is it coil or cur oil? It's really hard to hear what you're I saying. It's coil. Cro it is coil. Nope. It could just be out of line, but still too. Do you remember the last time you did this? Yeah. I do. Right before. Oh, hey yo! There it goes. Close. That's what I'm talking about. Now, even bigger moment. Will it open? Will it open? <laughs> Let's find out. Fingers in. Oh, hey. Okay. So it works. It's it just, just gets a little stuck. Off. 
Oh, nice. Look, it's still. Yeah. Something's up still. Something's still stuck. Move your arm. Okay, well. Yeah, weird. Maybe, does that need. Loosened? I mean. No. Uh oh. It looks like it's supposed to clip down here too yeah, though. Do you see that? It does. I definitely don't think it was a coincidence that it closed like the second time I tried because last video we did this back in what October. Uh, I shut this thing like a hundred times and it never closed. And you cracked that. And I cracked that. Don't look at that. That's fine. <laughs> I just need to remind everybody. Yeah, yeah, they remember. They Sometimes remember. hitting it harder is not the answer. The hood is finally closed and it opens, which is nice. Actually, this side isn't too bad, that body line. This side's off a little bit. You know, it's, it's touched in the back there, just a hair. So what we're gonna do before we tighten all the bolts up and everything, maybe this is wrong. What we're gonna do just a little bit of body work here on this and maybe you guys know where i'm going with this but if not you'll find out here in a second obviously you guys can see this ridge right here right i don't know if the hood i mean the hood did fall while it was off the car i don't know if old springs at some point somebody kinked this hood a little bit there's a little bit of a spot there and i'm going to use a trick that somebody taught me or I, they didn't teach me i guess i just watched them do it so we'll see if it works here all right ready ready Give one more. All right, now the hood's closed again. It's not like super better. Let's see if we can get one more, one more smack out of it. The hood popped open again. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, yeah, that's so much better. She got no before and after. What? I've been doing the whole time. Oh. Hey. <laughs> hey. Look, there's a whole. Hey. It's not perfect by. Wait a second. Any Who cares? Means. He's a real YouTuber. <laughs> he remembered to record. That's right. Anyways. It could, it could use one more smack. Oh. <laughs> Good job, our little videographer over here. She's doing good. She's getting that good angle. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Breaking the camera. Oh, hi. Mommy. Thank you. Right I you. hope you. So I need to do right here, just a hair. So you see that ridge right there? That yeah. used to be like where you couldn't rub your hand over it. And now you can. So it's better. But so I'm going to take this and put it like that. Oh, and just hit that one and spot. Come here, Liv. And She's not like crazy hard or nothing. You don't want to go too far. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, I think that's pr that's probably good enough for now. What do you guys think? We'll, are, we'll leave, are you we'll asking me it. and Olivia or the internet? Both. Well, Olivia and I think it's great if it means you stop making that loud sound. As you guys can see here. I've got to take this hood and slide it that way. It's it's rubbing right there, and there's plenty of room over there. So if I can just kick the back of it that way just a little bit, and then we'll go in there and actually tighten down the hood bolts, and then the hood closes. Then we got to find trim clips. I don't know where to find trim clips for this car yet. We got to find those because we got a few pieces of trim to install. Do you know where they are, Jeanette? Not the pieces of trim where they need installed. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. Pop quiz. Right here? Right there? Yeah, two on the front. Mine are on the and side. two on the side. Oh, you have two on the side too? Yeah. Oops. You also have two on the side that needs done as well. That's what yours is inside the car. I'm happy with that. And those marks will probably come off with a pressure wash. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. But I think we're just about ready to go for a little bit of a walk here. You want to uh, record? You want to record? You yeah. already recorded. Point it at daddy. Here. Point it at daddy. Can you hold it? All right. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, okay. you got to point it at daddy. Where's daddy? All right. We'll catch you guys later. It's chaos. There's two, two phones. We'll see how this goes in editing. But, this one's just looking at my shoulder. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah, we got both sides of the hood latch cable lubricated. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, it seems to be working better 
and we got the latch uh, lubricated, everything with that, with this, you know, the good stuff. So we'll see how good it is. I I'm happy with it now. Uh, this is the first time the hood closed in a long time, and I'll tell you, it makes a huge difference just seeing it actually closed, opposed to being, you know, kind of latched open and all that stuff. Once I get these, you know, body lines just a little bit nicer, I'm excited. And that's about to be time to wash the car. Uh, we'll kind of get that taken care of. And I got a guy's phone number that's supposed to do windshields, but he seems to be dodging me. Uh, we'll see if I can give him to pick up his phone. Hey guys, back at it today. Tonight, we've already been out here today. Back at it tonight on the 59. I am so excited to get this thing going. It still needs some stuff, don't get me wrong. It's close, but it's not that close either. So, what we're gonna do right now is we got the hood latched. Um, it looks good. It needs adjusted still. I adjusted it a little bit, but it's not there yet. You know, it's not rubbing in the back anymore. This side's a little bit bigger still, but it's honestly, it's not too terrible. For adjusting it by myself with a piece of wood, a hammer, and a half inch wrench, you know, I'm gonna count that as a win. So we're gonna pretend like that's totally fine. I got it tightened down, it's good to go. And we're gonna pop the hood because we need better brake lights. I was driving this thing around and it barely had any brake lights at all. It, they're there, they work, but you really have to press the brakes to get them to light up. Well, if you're just cruising around town, you don't need to jam on your brakes. So your brake lights might not come on. Now, is that improperly adjusted brakes? Maybe. Is that something else going on? Sure. Could I get a low pressure switch? I guess. I don't know. I haven't tried one yet. And you know what? I couldn't get one same day. You know what I could get same day? Was a 70s Ford truck uh, brake light switch. And I saw somebody on one of the Etzel pages. Um, shout out to that group. They are awesome as always. And they said, the one guy said to get a piece of uh, angle bracket. And you can see I already made this one a little bit bigger to fit the switch. So right here you can see the switch now fits inside that just nice. So what we're gonna do is go underneath the car, or go in the car, find a spot where we can mount this onto something. I believe the steering column gives us enough room. And we're going to try to mount this on there with a couple zip ties or a hose clamp or something. When you press the brake pedal, this releases, turns the brake lights on. We let off the brake pedal, it pushes it in, turns the brake lights off. You know, it doesn't matter if there's whatever PSI of fluid in the system or not. If the pedal is physically down, brake lights are on. So we're gonna switch to this style. You know, they changed it for a reason. You know, old cars are awesome, don't get me wrong, but there's some things that could be updated and I, I feel like this is it in this situation. So let's go ahead and see if we can find a spot to mount this thing. I think I found where we're going. So I was gonna mount off this top rod right here, but it turns out that's the shifter and this whole rod actually pivots. But this one, I don't think it does. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this Right about there, just like that. You know, right there looks pretty good. Uh, we're gonna get it as tight as we can with some hose clamps and stuff. And then we're gonna run some wires to it. You know, brake lights off, press it, brake lights turn on. And that should be our uh, at least somewhat temporary fix, this problem that we got. You know, we gotta make sure that people see us when we're stopping. You know, you don't wanna be that guy driving a classic car with no brake lights or brakes that don't work. You know, don't, don't be that guy. You know, get your stuff done, get it on the road, but be safe, guys. Got some stuff done. I ended up getting the brake light switch wired in uh, with some, what are they, quarter inch female adapter, whatever those things are. Some hose clamps and that, uh, those adapters got it good. Got it run through a hole in the firewall that already existed. So that was nice and easy. These ends uh, have seen better days. The original ends from the car. So I went ahead and just snipped them off anyways. I was able to get new leads for the other side for the starter solenoids, so I'm, if I want to switch back, I can wire them back in, no big deal. I'm not worried about it, purists, cry about it. Here, you can see my very wonderful wiring. So, there's that. I got my shrink wrap on there, I got my butt connectors over here ready to go. So, I need to turn the lights off. We're gonna hit the brake pedal, see if they light up. Woo -hoo -hoo! There they go, look at that. We got one, the other one's not working. That's all right, man, and I'm barely tapping the brakes too and they light up. 
That is exactly what I wanted to see. So now we're gonna go ahead and square up that wire and get that a little bit more permanently installed. I think we'll move on to the headlights. I know we need to do some more wiring up there because a rat chewed through. Uh, I found that out last time we were messing with the headlights. I got the foot switch, which I believe is why we didn't have any headlights at all last time. Those always go bad. Everything in this car is bad, surprise. So we're gonna put a new one of those in and then maybe they just work. Uh, yeah, I'll probably have to order new headlights. It's no big deal, you know, so whatever. If we can get something to work, that'd be cool. At least just get power to the plugs and then I can order new light. You know what I mean? Let's keep going. All right, we've got the brake lines, brake lines. <laughs> brake lights are squared up. Uh, they just need some heat on the shrink wrap. We'll take care of that tomorrow. Um, I went ahead and installed the new, what is this thing called? Switch interrupter, which is basically the little bright switch down here. If you can see that. The lights are on. I got tail lights back here. They look good. Uh, however, we got nothing up front. Not even on the side that I thought we would. We're gonna need to troubleshoot just a little bit here. Um, I guess what we'll do first is pull out the power probe and start pulling backs of these off and, and see what we got um, power wise. Make sure power is coming to the front of the car uh, for the headlights because well, if it's not reaching the headlights, then we don't gotta, you know, it's somewhere else. We'll, we'll figure it out. We got it, don't worry. Gonna go ahead and ground him out way over here. And so now you'll be able to see when we have power, right? Maybe we find a closer ground. There we go. We got a good ground. Now we're gonna go ahead and poke around, see if we can find power for the headlights. So here is the problem for the driver's side. I don't know if you call this a problem or not for you, but it is for me. Uh, Cause this means that our headlights they're not doing the headlight thing. It looks like we're not getting power to this right here. That means we got somewhere else is our issue. Two wires coming in down here. Do they just tee off? Is that what happens? Nothing and nothing. So we do not have power up here like I thought we were going to. You know, that just means that we're not getting power up here. So we gotta figure out why. Bunch of different things that could be it. I guess we can go try to find a headlight fuse, make sure the headlight fuse is still good. Although, from my time doing this last time, I don't think there is one. So I'm actually going to go click the button and make sure that this isn't like highs or lows or I don't know. Let's go push the button inside, see what happens. Hey, okay. So we, we are getting power, at least to this green wire, whatever that is. Which means that we're probably also getting power to this side. It's just that that bulb is blown out, if I remember right. What we get to do now is uh, wire this back up. We'll make this work and we'll go from there. Well, we've got a uh, droopy eyed Edsel here. And you can see the problem is that these wires, which control all of this, uh, just end right here. They're supposed to go back in here and come out over here, all that fun stuff. They don't do any of that. So we're gonna go ahead and use this blue wire that I have. That's roughly the same gauge. And we're going to run from there into the engine bay and we'll make it look halfway decent in the engine bay. Now we're gonna do one wire at a time so we know which is which because we have one color 14 gauge wire. We gotta let the ambulance pass so the Bumpus dogs will stop howling. Man, those dogs drive me nuts. All right, well the dogs have just about quieted down. So welcome back. What I did while they were barking was I went and got some more heat shrink. We're gonna try to make this as uh, waterproof as we can. Is it the right way? Uh, probably not. I'm sure someone is cringing right now what we're doing, but that's all right. And just because we're going to work on one wire at a time doesn't mean we can't prep them both right away. So we're going to do that. All right, nice and tight. We're going to start with the green because green means go. At least that's what the psychologists say, which is why they're changing color. I don't know. Green is good. Start there. We'll work on the bad ones second. That this is probably way more than enough wire to get what we need done. So I'm gonna go ahead and just snip that there and then uh, install it on this side. So when it is too short, we have to undo a lot of connections. All right, that's pretty secure. You know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna do both at the same time. I lied. And what we'll do is we're just gonna tape this one on both ends. Well, actually this wire is black on both ends because I painted it. And this one's blue. So we actually do have two different color wires. So we're gonna go ahead and just do the other one. Hung this up somewhere and painted something with it. It is definitely something I would have done. All right, these perfect? Nope. Are they gonna work? I guess we'll find out. I mean, 
That is what it is, right? You guys see this hole right here? That's where that wire is gonna come through. Then we'll reconnect this to that, call it a day. Actually, we'll not call it a day, we'll keep going. We got stuff to do, guys, so. Is that the hole that I said right there? All right, there we go. You see those wires come out? Probably not. But they're, they're, they're in there now, I promise. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, connect them to this. I'll probably trim it back to here or so. Get the, uh, the junk off there. Then we should maybe have evidence that one of the headlight works, or the headlights do work. And if the bulb works, maybe we'll swap it over. I don't know. If I can just get one side of the headlights to work, at least power probe, then I know if the headlights work. You know, the switch is good, all that fun stuff. If the bulbs are bad, the bulbs are bad. They're at least 50 years old duh they're gonna be bad so they might work for a second and then blow out that's what happened before for us um when we just had the dry passenger side working so we're gonna go ahead and probably do the exact same thing to the driver's side and blow it out immediately once we get this thing wired in but i'll catch you on the uh on the flip side all right we've got the headlights wired back up over here let's go ahead and turn the lights on hit that dimmer switch a couple times see what you guys see out here all right Hey, we have lights. Is that one not working? Hey, I'll take that. Oh, I love it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to, well, I guess I'll test here now. See what lights up, what doesn't. Um, it looks like red might be lows and greens might be highs. Other way around. So it looks like red. Yeah, red's low, so if we go flick it to green, we should see power over here, and hopefully we see power over here. All right, so do we have power here? All right, no power there, no power there. So why are we not seeing power on that probe? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, is it a possibility that we have a faulty switch in there? Maybe, realistically, nah, you know, I don't know. Or do we have no low beams and we only have high beams? Is red high? Something's up with our green wire over here. Um, I guess we can go check the other side. Let's go see what's up over there. Theoretically, the green should light up. Nothing. And I bet if we go hit the switch in there, this red one will ding. Let's go see what happens. All right, what do you think? Is this red one gonna make noise? No. Okay. But the green one does. Well, how does that make any sense? Is it flip-flop driver's side to passenger side? Well, help me understand here. Because right now we got, looks like red with green stripe, or red with black stripe with power. Nothing. But now we got green on this side with power. I am confused. Um, okay. I still think that this headlight down here is just out. Uh, from last time we were messing around with this. Um, unless there's something more messed up, which is why this stuff seems to be backwards over here. Um, I really don't know. So let's go ahead and just plug this back in for now. I think we're probably gonna go inside, do a little bit of research, take some notes, and uh, we'll come back out here tomorrow and hit this again uh, and see what's going on. It's getting kind of late. You know, there's still, there's still time uh, to get some of this stuff done. That's for sure. But we got the brake lights squared up, which is a big, big deal for me. So people can see when we are stopping. And we got the headlight switch squared up. So at least power is getting to the front of the car. Does it make sense? No, but, <laughs> but it's here now. So maybe we can make something happen with this. And uh, make sure you stay to the end of the video, guys, so you can see these new wheels. Got these new wheels and tires on here. They look good. Hey, well, thanks for waiting till the very end. I appreciate it. Uh, like I said at the beginning, this turned into automotive ADHD. It was all over the place. I know that. Uh, but I was just trying to get everything as ready as we can for the cruising season as quickly as possible. And, you know, I've been doing this YouTube thing for a year, but it's, it's tough to map everything out and get it right. So these really good YouTubers at it, props to them. We'll definitely do that on the Meteor, but I don't know if it's a necessity on the 59. You know, it's just such a bigger car. I don't know if it needs those really skinny tires up front but we're gonna get some studs pressed out we're gonna get you know spacers in the back we're gonna do all sorts of different things with these wheels and tires in this car it's gonna look awesome uh, but i said I'd, I'd show you guys some photos so 
you know, there's some photos. Uh, I didn't want to make the, make myself a liar here. Uh, stay tuned for a article that I'll be posting that I was uh, interviewed for by the U.S. Sun. Uh, pretty cool. The We'll see how it turns out. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. By the time this video posts, maybe I've seen it. I will see. Excited. It's all about the Edsels. It's about the 58. It's about the 59. And just kind of the history of the brand and how it. some people are still keeping it alive. So I'd like to think that's what we're doing here. And yeah, we're super close to 1,000 subscribers. We're at like 992, 993. Uh, so we need like seven more people to hit that subscribe button. If you're still watching this and you're not subscribed, hit the button. Come on. Uh, so we'll catch you guys next time. Appreciate it. And we'll get back on the Meteor next probably. Do some floors in that car. All right. See you then.